Hello, my crafty loving friends. Welcome to Repurpose My Way. I'm Shelly. Today I have some primitive wall decor for you and then a little surprise at the end of something really cute that I couldn't leave out. I had to show you. I love these frames. They're wooden frames. I got these at Goodwill. I got two of them uh, exactly the same but mirror image. So they're golf clubs and on this side, I think the golf clubs are on one side and the other painting, they're on the other side. I think they're exactly the same. But I wasn't even looking at the picture. It was all about the frame, and I just love the big, thick frame there. The color wasn't quite what I wanted, so I sanded it down the best that I could, and I got out my burgundy paint and gave it a good two coats of this color. I really love this paint. I This is a mixture of crimson, waverly, and just a dab of black paint, and then you just keep mixing it until you feel that you have the right color. But I love this deep, dark burgundy, and it just looks so, so very primitive. Once those two coats were dry, I went back and distressed around all the edges of my picture frame. Just hit the high spots the best that I could and got it down to the wood as much as possible. Now I'm going to show you what I'm going to put on the front. This is actually wallpaper border. I got this at a steal for $5 a roll. These go for like $22, $23 at some places, sometimes more. Um, it is, it says family on it and I've done a bunch of these signs with uh, this border before and I was so thankful that I found these, this roll, I actually got a couple of them at that $5 price. So, uh, this will repay for itself, uh, just by selling this one picture frame and, with the saying on it and uh it actually will pay for all the rolls that I purchased because I bought more than two <laughs> just so you know <laughs> this is just the first one the second picture that I show you you will see the uh the other roll that I got but uh this is pre pre pasted wallpaper border so it has the paste already on there and it's activated by getting it wet so I soaked it in my sink for a second and just for a few, just for a few seconds and then uh, folded it onto itself so that the glue could just kind of uh, activate and it only takes a, a very short time. And then I stuck it onto my, my picture frame. Now I cut this down so that it would just make it easier to apply to the frame. And I'm just taking a razor blade and trimming off the edges. I'm just creasing it really well with my finger. Then you just got to hold down on the edge and pull that blade right through the wallpaper border. This is thick border, so it takes a little bit of pressure to get that done. But it works really well, and I love how this came out. Now, if I had some antique wax, I would put it on this, but all I have is this grayish brown glaze that I can put on there. And I wanted to darken up the spots where I had sanded this down and uh, like darken up the, the wood that is peeking through. And this did a pretty good job of that. And it also was sealing in my picture frame. So I like how this came out, but I really would have rather had my Waverly Antique Wax. I am out at the moment and I have not been anywhere to go pick it up. So I applied the glaze and wiped it back and this piece is finished.
nope, you're not seeing double. Like I said, I bought two of these. They were $6 a piece and I just love the frame and knew exactly what I wanted to do with them even before I got my wallpaper border. So like the last frame, I sanded it down so that it was just about gone. There was still a lot of green, but it was just about gone. And I painted it black, obviously, and distressed it. So now I have a different border that I purchased for $5. Very exciting, because I love it. It's got chickens on it and sunflowers, and I just love all that. And I decided that I was going to just do this section. It says, count your blessings, and a little bit of the sunflower showing. So that's what I wanted to have in my frame this time. So I cut it down like the last time, ran it underwater to activate that paste, and then I'm putting it down on my frame. Now I always have a paper towel wet, get a little bit wet, just kind of damp to apply my wallpaper border. It also cleans up your paste that sometimes comes out from behind your border. So you want to um, kind of keep that handy. And it also helps you get out any of the air bubbles and wrinkles if you get any. Uh, usually wet, as the border dries, you uh, it will suck in kind of like what Mod Podge does and it flattens out. But sometimes you'll get bubbles in there that just don't want to go because there's too much air in there. It can't pull it out. So that little piece of paper towel usually will help you uh, kind of even that out. You could also probably use your little roller or you could use uh, a, like a, um, a rubber scraper or something just to go over the top of it gently to get any of the air bubbles out. Now here I'm showing you, I like to get down and really look at it before it fully dries and make sure that I got all of the air bubbles out. And every once in a while you'll find one little bugger uh, that just doesn't want to come out or you think you push the air out and it just doesn't. I just take the tip of my razor blade and just give it a little poke and then rub my finger over it and it allows the air to come right out of there. So it makes it a lot easier to work with by doing it that way. So I know this isn't wall decor, but this was so cute, I wanted to show it to you. I got these little candlesticks for $2 at Goodwill recently, and these two little birds from the flea market for $3, I think, for the pair. And I just love the shape of them, and but they're a little bit shiny. So I'm going to take my rust -Oleum Flat Clear. It's a matte. And I'm showing you here, I sprayed one of them to show you what it does. It dulls it right down. Now you could leave the dull on there. I think that makes that bird look so much better without being shiny. I did go ahead and spray the other bird so that it was dulled down just like the one on the left. And then I'm taking some gray paint, it's gray brown. It's a lot like the mushroom paint that I get from Folk Art. Uh, this is uh, from Amazon. I'll put a link down in the description. I think it's Kills paint, and I was trying to find a bigger bottle of the uh, mushroom paint, and uh, this is what I found. So it was just like a sample, but anyway, I did two coats on this bird, and I really love this color. I don't think it's quite the mushroom color, but it's pretty darn close. So these covered really well. If they, if I'd left them shiny, I probably would have had to do a few more coats to get it covered. But because I sprayed it first and got the shininess off, the paint stuck really well. So after the two coats and they dried, I took some black paint on a uh, paper plate and my 
crockery stamps from IOD. I think I bought these from Jamie Ray Vintage. I'll put a link down in the description. I got these last year and I really, I haven't used them. So I decided I had seen recently some people and I can't remember who unfortunately, or I would have tagged them so that you know where to look, but they put stamps on their little birds. So I just took one with a bunch of words, don't know what they say. I believe it's in French. But uh, anyway, I stuck it on my bird just to give it a little bit of a, I don't know, just to give it a little vintage feel. Stuck my stamp back in the paint and I thought it felt a little too wet. So I just kind of tamped it off there and, and, re, and just stamped it on the plate. And then I put the other one on the other bird. And I left one, my thumb, on one part and then I used my other hand to get it to stick down so it wouldn't move because it will get slippery with all that paint and stuff. So uh, once that was done and dried, I took my clear paint spray again, my matte sealer, and I sprayed my little bird so that they will be sealed up really nicely. Now I have a little bit of this E6000 left. It's the white color. I didn't even know they made it, but I picked it up accidentally and it's almost gone. So I've done pretty well using it up. I refuse to buy any more until I use it up. So uh, I just put some of that around the rim of my little candlestick and then I'm gonna take my bird and stick it down. I used a little bit of hot glue so that it would stick down immediately because I wanna start uh, working on it and decorating it and I didn't want to wait for that E6000 to dry. So I did that on the second candlestick as well and now I'm taking some Spanish moss and I'm going to go around the bottom of the bird and make it look kind of like he's sitting on a little nest. I got some cute little pale yellow uh, pit berries, little rings with rusty stars, and I thought they would look good at the bottom of my little candlesticks and add a little bit of color, and I think that looks so pretty. I really love them. I took a couple sprigs off my rings and cut them down because I want to bring some of that color up to the nest under the bird, not too much. You also could use greenery for this. You could use uh, the different colored flowers. Of course, this makes it a little more primitive using the pit berries, so that's why I'm doing that. I really like how this came out. I think it's so cute. Of course, I had to add a little bit of the black and tan material. I made a bow uh, right around the base of the candlestick and then trimmed off the edges. And then these cute little candlesticks are finished. Let me know what you think. I hope you totally loved my wall decor, my primitive wall decor, and my cute little bird candlesticks. I think everything came out so cute myself, but let me know down in the comments what you think. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.